Bits, bits on. It's that time again, 8 p.m. Central Time. This is the show about Jeep Cherokees, xjtalk.com, episode 28. Wow, just two more for uh, 30. It's a weekly show about uh, Jeep Cherokees and, uh, well, things that are going on, usually automotive related, but not always. Tonight, going to give you a little update on uh, what happened with uh, last week, um, the failed Mustang and uh, the Jeep replacement. So we'll get going here in just a minute. Doki. Well, I was just chatting with a, a potential caller. We were uh, trying to get him on uh, here for the last several days, and uh, due to various things, including me being lazy, we haven't done it. So uh, we'll uh, we'll get to that here in just a second. Well, just going to give you a little update. Uh, last week, I spent most of the show um, talking about uh, the problems I was having with my wife's Ford Mustang and its uh, 3.8 V6 uh, engine. And uh, I guess it was, I don't, I don't think that I had done anything that day. Um, well, actually, I think I had looked and I saw a 1999 Jeep Cherokee uh, 4.0 four-wheel drive, uh, AW4 transmission with 142,000 miles on uh, Craigslist. Uh, I called about it the, the day after and uh, found that... Um, the uh, the guy that it was a dealer a used car dealership that had it and uh, he had just bought it from a uh, another dealer which kind of concerned me but anyway uh, he had just bought it from another dealer and uh, he wasn't aware that it was a four wheel drive I was looking at the ad from the uh, from the original person that uh, had uh, placed the the Craigslist ad so anyway I went over there and uh, it was over there close uh, relatively close to where I work. So I drove over there during lunch and uh, had a look at it, and the paint looked pretty, pretty bad. Um, not li- like it was showing through, but just not uh, didn't wasn't all nice, bright, and shiny. And uh, the guy said that he thought it had been sitting outside in the sun quite a bit. Uh, the interior looked very nice. the uh, The engine ran very well uh, when I test drove it other than a little bit of wiggle, which uh, I later attributed to a, a very low tire. Um, it was uh, very smooth, uh, and uh, boy, it had a lot of get up and go to it. So um, I uh, spoke with my wife and made the command decision to uh, purchase it. So we are now a two Jeep XJ family, 
1998, which is the the bright red one, and the 1999, which is, uh, I think they call it the chili pepper red. So uh, that's pretty exciting, uh, other than having uh, two beasts to feed. <laughs> um, a, a, a member was able to uh, get me a build sheet for the, uh, the 99, uh, even before I bought it. And I uh, was able to see that uh, pretty much all of the options that uh, we have on the 98, we have on the 99. It didn't have the up, up country tow package, I'm sorry, the up country package or the tow package like the uh, 98 did. So no, no factory skids, uh, no fog lights, and uh, no tow hooks. But luckily, since I have a custom front bumper on the 98, I still have the tow hooks and the fog lights and, uh, you know, various and sundry goodies. So uh, I'll be pu putting all that stuff on the 99. Um, so far, I have um, found out how to get rid of the, the grays off the, the uh, body side molding and because uh, it's not painted on the 99. It's a, a 99 Sport. And uh, I've got it back to a pretty good, pretty good uh, shade of black, and uh, was able to polish out using some polishing compound and a little machine, able to uh, get the paint looking pretty good. It's got some spots. I was a little surprised I can't find that chili pepper red anywhere. Uh, at least uh, two of the auto parts places that I tried, uh, they kind of skip over it. I guess it's not a real popular color. Uh, I was lucky that they had the, I think it's PR4, which is the uh, the bright red, the um, uh, poppy red, that uh, is the, the color on the 98. Well, uh, let's see if uh, Dalton's ready to call. Um, oh, actually, he's asking, he's in the chat room, and he's asking what the number is, which is a, a good opportunity for me to give you the number. Um, if you should uh, would like to call in and leave some uh, feedback, uh, we have a voicemail set up. We're actually going to be using it to take calls uh, right now, at least a call from Dalton. But uh, you can call any time of the day or night and ask your question and have it played on the uh, on the show more than likely. That number is 530-675-4102. That's 530-675-4102. Um, if you don't want to call the, the voicemail, you can send an uh, email to uh, motorroy at xjtalk.com. That's motorroy at xjtalk.com. And uh, we can read your question or comment on the, uh, on the show. Um, you know what, Dalton? I don't think I have that set up where... Um, where it will actually ring through. I think you'll go straight to voicemail because I wasn't going to take calls tonight. Uh, if you want to put your uh, your phone number in the the chat, I'll just give you a call. He's probably already gotten the voicemail and he's uh, leaving a message saying, "Hey, pick up." Yeah, uh, it is going straight to voicemail. For some strange reason, I thought that I could just uh, magically will it to. Uh, um, redirect to the uh, the home phone, and uh, that, of course that's not going to happen. It's going to require require me to do some typing and uh, logging in and so on and so forth. So, if you wanted to just shoot me your number, I can call you. So, if you just put it in in uh, in chat, uh, if you don't want to put it in chat, that's fine. I can uh, um, turn the uh, Turn it on where the uh, when you call the five three zero number it'll come here. You let me know what you want to do. So it looks like the tires need to be replaced on the ninety nine. It's um, it's okay. Oh, and the air conditioner doesn't work. I tried uh, charging the air conditioner and I was unable to do so. I'm going to be going over to a friend's place uh, this Saturday, hopefully. And uh, we're going to see what we can't do with it. Replace some O-rings. And uh, need to go buy some um, R1, 132? 132. I think it's 132. Got to go uh, buy some R132 before Saturday. So probably Friday. And hopefully um, all things will go well. And we, my wife will have air conditioning on her 99. I was talking to her about, uh, I have I pretty much have all the parts. Um, 
I got pretty much uh, all the part. Oh, Dalton says uh, he's going to have to uh, to take off. Um, <laughs> so uh, no call from uh, from Dalton tonight. He has a really nice. Um, uh, I, I keep forgetting what it's called. The basket that goes on top of the the, the jeep where you can carry uh, various. Uh, it's really, I guess, like a luggage thing. But uh, several people put uh, tires and uh, thank you roof rack. It's so simple. Um, Dalton built a, a roof rack, and uh, he doesn't have a welder, so he made it out of uh, electrical conduit using uh, pre-bent 90-degree elbows and uh, those little sleeves that have the, the screws so that you can connect the, the pipes together. And it worked out really nice. It uh, He painted it black, and uh, he attached it to the uh, existing roof rack on his uh, Jeep Cherokee, and... Uh, he says solid as a rock. Very impressive um, because I think the, the total parts outlay was $100. And uh, it looks uh, very similar to a basket that you would probably see for three or $400. Um, it was a bit of a risk on his part. I mean, he had to, had to think about it. He had to go buy the parts and then put it together and have it work out. But that, that's kind of the, the fun of trying something like that is... Um, getting uh getting the stuff putting it together and having it work out well so uh hats off to uh, to dalton and you can see that um that build on xjtalk.com all you have to do is just jump over there and if you scroll down it's at the very top of the articles which is towards the bottom of the the front page so just go to www.xjtalk.com and you can see um Dalton 4x4's uh, article about uh, building a roof rack with no welding. It means pretty much anybody uh, with uh, minimal skills and $100 can uh, have a roof rack and uh, look like one of the uh, expensive uh, roof racks that you would uh, that you might buy from Quadratech or uh, one of the other sites, one of the um, even one of our vendors that uh, carry roof racks. So anyway, I'll uh, go back to the 1999. I'm pretty pretty excited about that. Uh, the paint was able to be rejuvenated, and uh, it was uh, it actually looks pretty good. It passed the wife test as well. After I got done with uh, the buffing machine and the um, polish, what do you call that stuff? Not uh, rubbing compound. After I got done with the little. Uh, uh, I want to call it an orbital sander because it's it's got got a big buffing pad on it and it, it goes it kind of moves around in an oblong uh, pattern so you don't uh, get any uh, uh, circular patterns in the in the paint but it, uh, it it shined that up really well it didn't require very much much effort either now I did uh, I did eat through that um, polishing pad that came with uh, the unit. Uh, before I could get done, I was uh, working on the roof, and I got done. I, I got uh, about two feet, eh, maybe two feet, um, from the back in, and about two feet from the front in on the roof. So there's a, a nice section up there on top that uh, really looks bad. Um, but the, I got all the sides and the back hatch and uh, the hood, um, all all that done. So it's pretty shiny. Looks pretty good. Uh, it looks a lot better than what it looked when I went over there to uh, to test drive it. So far, I'm very happy with that. I'll be a lot happier once the air conditioning is working, and uh, happier still when we get some good tires on there. Oh, I think I was mentioning uh, the lift kit. Um, since I've been upgrading the four and a half inch uh, Rough Country lift that uh, I uh, purchased and, and put on the the 98 a few years ago. I guess it's coming up on three years, maybe four years ago when I put that on there. I've upgraded um, the uh, upper and lower control arms with uh, uh, Iron Man 4x4, uh, excuse me, Iron Man Fab 4x4 um, control arms. And um, <clears throat> the uh, the leaf springs uh, were originally at a Leafs, and uh, I uh, purchased some new Leafs to go on, uh, which was always the intent. I just, I just knew I couldn't afford wheels, tires, and lift all at the same time. So I have a set of Leafs that uh, aren't the greatest in the world, but they're certainly, uh, they're certainly good. And um, I really, I think 
uh, out of everything that I have, I would need um, I would need rear shocks. I would need a um, some shackles to go on the back uh, to get actually get four and a half inches of lift in the back because the 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 add leaf only adds about two inches of lift, I believe, and then the the the, um, the shackles, the rough country shackles, add another uh, two and a half to that to get to the four and a half. And I would need coil springs, or I could, I could use spacers, I suppose, but um, well, no, I couldn't, not on the stock springs. Um, but I was planning on going to six and a half inch on the ninety eight, so I should have, and and to do so, I was going to get six and a half inch rough rough country springs. So with that, and uh, like I said, the two two rear shocks would all I would need, and actually I could upgrade the the rear shocks that I have on the ninety eight, and then I would have those. So really, probably for about one hundred and fifty bucks, which would be the cost of the the six and a half inch coil springs, on the outside chance that I can't find them used, um, then you know I would have a four and a half inch lift for the uh, for the ninety nine. Now my wife, uh, I asked her about, uh, hey, would you mind if I if I put the four and a half inch lift on the ninety nine? And she says, well, it's it's so nice and quiet with the windows rolled up, you can actually have a conversation. <laughs> and I laughed and I said, well, the, the ninety the ninety eight is really loud because of the the tires. I have the thirty two inch um, uh, uh, BFG mud tires. And she says, oh. Well, wouldn't it look funny with a four and a half inch lift and regular tires? And I said, oh, you got a point there. It just might. So uh, today I was asking on the site, what's the largest size tire as far as height goes or diameter um, that I could put on a stock XJ without having to remove the flares or cut the fenders? And, uh, and and this is this isn't an off road vehicle. This is my wife's Jeep. And it doesn't mean it'll never go off road, but that's not the that's not the purpose. So, um, and I was thinking that it would be about a, a thirty inch tire. So my uh, my follow up question to that was, what's the smallest tire you could put? On a Jeep XJ with a four and a half lint, four and a half inch lift, and, and not have it look silly, and amazingly, thirty inch tire came up again. <laughs> so, what I might be doing is, since I don't have the coil springs, and I really don't have the money to buy coil springs, and actually to go to the six and a half inch lift on the ninety eight, it's not just a simple simple matter of getting the coil springs. I also need to get a, a SYE. A slip look yoke eliminator kit um, before I can go to the six and a half um, on uh, on the ninety eight. So it's going to be the the cost of the coil springs plus the cost of the SYE plus the cost of a front drive shaft. I found a uh, a pretty nice uh, uh, SYE for an, an NP two forty two with one of our uh, vendors on XJ Talk uh, dirt bound off road. Uh, for the 97, I believe it's 97 plus um, models, you, I think his price is around 110, 118, 120 plus shipping. And of course, that doesn't include a drive shaft. Uh, I think he does sell drive shafts as well. I was originally going to go with the Tom Woods solution, um, and one of the reasons why I hadn't gone with it was because it was going to cost me around four to five hundred dollars. Now that would include um, a, a machined um, output shaft from from Tom Woods that I would replace on the 242, and then take the one that I took out and send that back to him as a uh, uh, with and get a core deposit back. And um, he also uh, sells you a very nice, um, perfectly matched to your installation drive shaft. But it has always, I, I, I love the idea of redundancy, and it, it has always intrigued me that there's people out there using hack and tap, certainly on the MP231, and, and what they do is they use a front drive shaft. And it, that it to me, is just a, such a, a wonderful idea because of the redundancy of having two exact drive shafts. 
So, you know, in, in the four-wheel drive, of course, you can, especially with an SYE, you can uh, get yourself home or in an emergency, emergency situation, you could lose a drive shaft and still be able to, to move forward. You know, and backwards too, but I mean, you'd still be able to, to get out of harm's way. Or if you're off-road, uh, you know, get it back uh, to the road, get it back home, do some work, whatever you need to do. Of course, I'm, I'm thinking in a, an emergency situation is probably when most everything bad is going to happen. So, uh, although, uh, whereas I do really, really like the Tom Wood stuff, and I know, I know he has very good stuff, and it's very, very much well worth the price, um, I, I think I'm going to go with the, uh, the dirt-bound off-road solution uh, on the SYE and go with uh, that hack and tap and, and make use of a second front drive shaft um nothing like having uh you know two of the same and it just it, it makes your options in my mind it makes your options a little more uh open and um i think we all we all face that those, those situations where we need options from time to time and I, I perhaps worry a little too much and one of the things i posted today was um, I posted up a poll about uh, basically uh, uh, how do you determine whether or not you go wheeling, and uh, if your if your uh, off road vehicle that you go off to have off road to have fun in, if that's your daily driver, one that gets you back and forth to work or to the grocery store or even drops the kids off at school, how do you determine it is a uh, a good idea or a bad idea to go off road? Now, certainly, people that have gone off road, um, you know, a lot, have a very good feel for what they can and can't get away with. I mean, for those of us that have driven on the streets for years, uh, we have a very high uh, confidence of uh, will I be able to get back and forth to where I'm going today. So, I think a lot of my trepidation uh, about uh, taking my daily driver off road is simply I just haven't done it that often. Um, uh, I've gone three times uh, in this vehicle, in the 98 vehicle, and it's worked out very well. The, the, the problem that I usually have is I get a little too caught up in the, um, <laughs> in the fun of it and the challenge of some of the things. I, uh, that's how I bent the, uh, the rough country track bar. I was trying to get up, a, up an, an embankment and I tried and tried and even put it in, uh, I took it out of uh, full-time four, four-wheel drive and put it in part-time <laughs> and still couldn't get up that that embankment. <laughs> but I got to use the winch to, to get out of there, and that was uh, that was fun, too, because, uh, you know, that was another piece of equipment that I had purchased and, and put on the Jeep to use, and it certainly was uh, nice knowing that I could get myself out of the situation, even if I couldn't drive it up, drive up that embankment like uh, one of the other XJ Talk members just had. But, uh, you know, that's all part of it. Um, you, you go out there, you try, and you see uh, what, your, what your vehicle can do, and you also learn about uh, uh, how to uh, get up uh, and over things and what, you, what it's capable of and uh, what other modifications you might need to make to make it uh, able to do more of the things you want it to do. And uh, the Jeep that did make it up the embankment in front of me had his uh, spider gears welded in the uh, rear end of his uh, Jeep. So uh, he certainly was, was uh, working with a little more traction uh, than what I was, and uh, that just encourages me a little bit more to um, move towards a, uh, a locking differential. And of course, my plan is to go, my plan, like most of them, <laughs> is a high dollar plan, which is uh, to go to a... Um, to go to a um, ARB air locker, since that gives you uh, excellent on-road and off-road handling capabilities. So uh, that's uh, it just uh, I guess it's around uh, eight nine. I guess it's closer to a thousand dollars after you you throw in the um, the ARB uh, air pump air compressor that that uh, goes with uh, or or that matches that uh, air locker, and then. Uh, uh, there's probably it probably would be another three or four hundred dollars to have the air uh, 
uh, locker installed because it requires the the rear end ring and pinion to be removed uh, from the carrier and um, put on the air locker and then installed and uh, adjusted so that it wouldn't uh, so the ring and pinion don't uh, disintegrate each other. I never realized how how critical and um, it, it's it, I I was there whenever they put the 456 gears in my uh, in the front and rear uh, axles, and I was a little surprised how complex that that whole thing is, uh, how the the critical uh, interface of those two things, how critical that those things are, so that it doesn't uh, those two pieces of metal don't tear each other up, you know, or have pieces flying off of it because. Uh, the stresses are too great, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, yeah, I don't, uh, I would like to know how to do that. And I know that it's possible to learn it. I'm sure I'm capable of it. Uh, it just, uh, it would be, I don't plan on doing it that much. I think it'd just be more expedient uh, to have it, have it done. But I would be looking at probably around fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500 just to uh, put an air locker in the, uh, the rear of my Jeep. But boy, it would be nice. Uh, it probably would have been enough to get me up that hill. And then, of course, later on, i um, get another air locker to go into the Dana 30. Um, unfortunately, um, because the, the makeup of the Dana 30, it probably would require... Um, I mean, I could get by with the axles that are there, but it probably would be the best thing to, uh, to put in some uh, chrome molly axles on the Dana 30. And I've uh, pretty well settled down to the point now where... <laughs> Um, when I replace the tires, I'm, I'm not going to go with 35s. I'll go with 33s and be reasonable. <laughs> so <laughs> the chrome body axles uh, locked on the Dana 30, um, it should survive. should survive most, uh, most anything I could do to it. At least that's, uh, that's what I'm reading and uh, what people keep telling me is uh, a uh, good thing to count on. So we'll see. And, uh, you know, that, that's kind of a long-term thing anyway. I mean, uh, don't know how long that's going to take. Um, if uh, engines keep uh, keep messing up like in the Mustang and then I have to go out and buy a... Um, go out and buy a replacement vehicle, <laughs> it might be a long time before I could even get tires for the 98. So uh, I'm going to take a quick break, and uh, I'm going to see if I can get this uh, this phone line set up just on the outside chance that we might want to have somebody call in. So we'll be back right after this. Okay, well I was trying to set up the uh, the phone so that we could take calls in case somebody wanted to call in and uh, boy I just couldn't type in the password and keep talking at the same time. Um, I've, I've often said multitasking is an illusion. Uh, I don't think anybody can do more than one thing at a time. You can practice and uh, I believe give the illusion of it but uh, nah, I don't think that uh, I don't think anybody can do the uh, can do the multitasking. I mean, right now I'm having a hard time just uh, trying to update this thing so that the uh, phone number will show. <laughs> so uh, here we go. If uh, you'd like to call in, you can call in at the number that you see there on the screen. It is 530-675-4102. 530-675-4102. Uh, 
or you can also call on Skype. I think I got the Skype thing working right. And uh, Skype's real easy. You just call xjtalk.com. And uh, I was kind of hoping that uh, Jensen, uh, XJ Talk member Jensen, was going to call in tonight. He had uh, sent me a private message and said he wanted to try out Skype. And I um, said, hey, the show's at 8 p.m. Central. Uh, give me a call. And we'll just try it out on the show. And I don't know. Uh, he's in uh, Canada. And uh, I don't know what... Uh, if their time is the same as our time here, they may uh, they may be on the metric time up there, and I don't know how that translates out into uh, you know regular God uh, the imperial time that we that we use God's time. So let's see. Uh, um, looks like uh, Jeep Four by Four Hunter has joined. Uh, hey, I hope that uh, some of those answers that you got on the eighty nine that you were looking to buy off a of Craigslist were helpful. Uh, there were several people on there that uh, I thought had some some good input. Um, Jeep Jeep Four by Four Hunter is uh, was chatting with me on Facebook, uh, which by the way XJ Talks on Facebook, just uh, Facebook slash XJ Talk and uh, friend us. Anyway, we were chatting on Facebook, and he said he was looking at a 1989 Jeep Cherokee uh, here in the Houston area. And uh, I think the the price tag on that thing was uh, 2000 or best offer. And since I had just purchased a 1999 with 142,000 miles for $2,500, I thought that might be a little high, depending on what mods uh, had been done to the 89. Now, the only Jeep Cherokee that I've ever had is the 98. So I'm, I lean towards the 97 plus body styles. And the 1999 is, is really one that I particularly like based on uh, several modifications that uh, uh, Chrysler Jeep made. And it has some, some really nice, uh, it kind of has the, 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 the best combination of all the 97, 98, and 2000, 2001, but it doesn't have some of the detractions like uh, uh, heads prone to cracking that I think happened on the 2000 and 2001. So, um, and it has the nice um, has the nice um, intake that has a little bit better airflow. Well, let's see. Uh, Jensen called in. Maybe he was one of the guests that was listening. Let's see what's going on with uh, Jensen. He's giving me video, which you're not going to be able to see. Uh, so let's uh, let's see if we can get him on here. Hey Jensen, thanks for calling in. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. Hey, how's it going? Um, you may need to turn the audio down, or <laughs> sorry, or, we might have a bit of a, a audio delay because I've got my speakers right beside my webcam. Well, if you are you listening to the show? Are you listening to the show? Yeah, I am. Okay. So you need to mute the audio of the show because that's going to be a long delay and just listen on Skype. That should that should get rid of most of the echo. Give that a shot here. Just give me one second. Yeah, the audio sounds pretty good. Uh, I can see uh, Jensen's uh, orange monster in the background, which, uh, again, you guys can't see. We may have to figure out how to uh, uh, feed the uh, Skype video over here to Ustream. I think that would be kind of fun for people to see who was calling in. I think so, too. Uh, the, the shop's kind of packed right now. I've got the Comanche to my left. I've got the big Jeep in the, in the shop doing all the upgrades, and I've got the T-Bird over on the side, and I think I still might end up with that other uh, Comanche <laughs> that I posted up on. So. You know, uh, some of you guys may not know, Jensen posted up a poll, and uh, he found another uh, Comanche MJ, and he was asking, should I, should I save it? I, I really don't need another project. And uh, I knew it was going to be this way. Everybody voted, uh, yeah, save it. I think it was only eight votes, but uh, everybody said save it. And and nobody is going to be helping him work on it. And nobody's going to be, <laughs> <laughs> nobody that voted is going to be uh, storing it for him. He's going to have to find a place to store it, plus come up the money to buy it. So at, yeah. le at least in my answer, I tried to say, you know, I think you're asking the wrong person. I get way too attached to my vehicles. Yeah, actually, we just had to write off our RV from snow damage over the winter, and even though it's a fifteen hundred dollar RV, I'm I'm still finding myself rather attached to it after three years, and it's hard to let it go. So, 
well, I get attached as well. Well, I think of anybody that puts any kind of effort into a vehicle uh, or enjoys the vehicle, you get an attachment to it. I mean, uh, I don't really even, I really don't even like that Mustang that my wife uh, has been driving in, 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 until the head, uh, and I haven't broken it down yet, so I don't know if it's a head gasket, an intake gasket, or a cracked head. Uh, I mean, I don't even drive that thing. It's too low to the ground for me, but even at that, I don't want to get rid of it. I, I would rather fix it. So I'm, I'm actually, I don't know if I stated that earlier or not, but I'm actually going to be trying to fix that. I'll, uh, I'm going to at least take it apart and see what's wrong with it. But I can appreciate that because I have an 02 Mustang sitting out front that's been sitting for a year that we just haven't been able to part with, even though we don't drive it, don't use it. And it's, uh, I, I actually got to the point of posting up on Kijiji, like similar to Craigslist, Got all the way to the point of hitting, you know, save ad, and I just, I haven't made it there yet. Yeah, I know what you mean. You know, I've got a Taurus, two-speed Taurus fan in the garage that I need to get rid of, and I haven't even put that up yet. I'm not even attached to the damn thing. That'd probably be 60 yeah. bucks right there that I could put towards things. Yeah, before... I'd almost be embarrassed to pan the webcam around the garage of all the stuff I've collected that I just seem to need. I, I, I'm, I think I'm on the verge of hoarding, but... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, but it's a good hoarding. <laughs> I like I, I like so. what I'm seeing there. Uh, now, you guys on the if we can, if we can streamline it all uh, the whole fleet down to Jeep stuff, I don't think I'll ever have a vehicle breakdown that I won't have a part for for at least the next ten years. Well, see, that's one of the reasons why. I, whenever I went to get this Jeep, I had looked at some Mustangs. In, in my mind, last week was this this vehicle is not the Mustang is not worth fixing because it's going to cost five hundred dollars for heads. It's going to take my time to go in it. And even then, there's no guarantee that it's going to, to work. It may require more time and effort and more money. So I just said, you know, hey, honey, I, you know, Craigslist, they've got, uh, uh, they've got Mustangs for less than what it would cost for me to fix this one. But would you mind if I got a, a Jeep Cherokee? You know, would you mind driving a Jeep Cherokee? And she kind of laughs and goes, no. Like, are you, are you nuts? And uh, I think what it is is because of all the time and effort that I put into the 98, she says, that's your Jeep. She doesn't like driving it. I mean, she does like driving it, but she doesn't because she doesn't want to mess up the seats. And I don't say anything to her. It's just the way she is. <laughs> she doesn't adjust the mirrors. I say, adjust the mirrors. I want you to see. I don't want you to run over somebody, you know. So it, was, it worked out well, and uh, I got her a 99, and I, I told her, I said, I know how to work on the Jeep. And I got, got it one year, di one year different than what, uh, what I'm used to, so it's almost virtually identical. And now I've got, uh, I've got parts, too that I've taken off the 98 that I can put on the 99. So it works out really nice. Well, you've got a great excuse to get a bigger lift for yours because you can reuse that one on hers, and then she can see better in traffic. And she really likes that. She's uh, five foot two, And other than getting the back of her pants wet when she's getting out of the 98, she likes sitting <laughs> up high. Yeah, I uh, just recently threw the Iron Rock lift in my uh, wife's TJ as a surprise for her. And she loved driving what she calls it. She calls it Rosie the Riveter, but uh, her other nickname for it is the Tank. And now since I've thrown that lift in, she loves it that much more. It's amazing to me, driving the 99, um, how low that is and how small <laughs> the vehicle feels. The vehicle feels really small, and it's a, exactly the same size as the 98. The only difference is, is you know, it being off the ground. So here's an interesting question for you. Are your Cherokees listed uh, on your, uh, like, registration as station wagons? No, I think they're listed as trucks. Well, I know, yes. the, uh, no, the 98, so I don't know, how, I haven't gotten anything on the 99 yet because it's, it's only a week old to us. Yeah, my 89, the big Jeep, the 89 is listed as an uh, SU, SUV. The 93 is listed as a station wagon. The TJ is listed as a station wagon. Oh, that's weird. Um, I'd, I'd, bl I'd, trucks. I'd blame that on the Canadians. You know what? We do do a little, <laughs> few things a little odd. <laughs> but you know what? The metric system, I don't care what you say. It makes sense because it's all by tens. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if you heard me talking about it uh, a few minutes ago that we're on uh, a different time standard than you yeah. guys are because you're using that metric time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm on Mountain, you're Central, so we have an hour time difference, I believe. Uh, yeah, I think that's right, because uh, Pacific is, uh, I think, two-hour time difference. 
Yeah, I like making that joke. There was uh, an old old Saturday Night Live routine uh, back whenever the metric system was still a possibility in the United States, and they they made a joke, and you've probably seen me talk about it on uh, on the site uh, about uh, the metric clock, the deca clock, instead of. Uh, oh, <laughs> So they had this whole skit about the deca clock. You know, if the metric system is such a great idea, why don't we tell time in metric? <laughs> yeah. So that was the whole b- b- basis of my joke for the uh, you guys are on the different time, the metric time up there. Well, I'm glad you got the chance to call in today, and it's certainly uh, the, uh, I mean, even with the, the video, the quality is very good. Um, is it? Audio quality is very good, yeah. I mean, I'm uh, I'm out in the garage going through a wireless connection on probably a six-year-old Dell that has been de- uh, designated as the garage computer, <clears throat> so I can keep everybody up to date on some of the junk I'm working on and <clears throat> where it's going. Well, the wireless, I mean, that's very brave. You're doing a really good job for a wireless connection. Of course, uh, that technology has, uh, has improved significantly in the past years. I wanted to mention real quick... Uh, uh, Jensen's sitting right next to uh, the MJ, and uh, he's been doing some body work and, until he took out some frustrations on it recently, and keeping us up, <laughs> keeping us up to date uh, on XJ Talk. And it's been a very interesting build. Uh, uh, actually, um, uh, the body work that he's been doing, he's been replacing a lot of the uh, the sections that have rusted in this thing, and uh, just beautiful work. I mean, it's uh, uh, been a lot of fun watching that, and I know how difficult it is to take pictures while you work and uh, just really want to thank you uh, personally at least uh, uh, voice wise for for doing that because it, it's a lot of fun to see and uh, I know it's not a lot of fun to have to stop and take pictures and um, and post those things up so well I gotta be honest I mean that I'm on a lot of different Jeep forums, and I have been for a long time. And the one really nice thing about XJ Talk over all the other ones is there's a lot of really positive, you know, comments. And when I get really frustrated and, you know, may or may not discipline a door to the point of uh, death, um, <laughs> getting the, that little bit of feedback when you have one of those really bad nights where, you know, you dig into the, the panel and you find rust behind rust behind rust and what's supposed to be a two hour job is a four hour job. And then all of a sudden you read like six posts of people going, wow, you know, you're doing a great job. It, it, it's, it's, it's a great motivator and it makes me feel a lot better about what I'm doing. Not thinking I'm some nuts 34 year old in a garage rebuilding a truck that's probably worth 50 bucks. So. No, it's uh, it, well, you know, it, it, it's like having a 12 year old vehicle. Uh, I'm driving around a 12 year old vehicle there's not that many Jeep Cherokees driving around the road, not like there used to be. And uh, I'm sure some people think that I'm nuts. Um, I'm quite a bit older than you, and I'm driving this thing with a um, hood scoop, and it's bright red, and these big tires, and a lift, and all this crap. Hell, I've even painted the front end parts red. But damn it, it's fun, and it's a, it's a unique vehicle. And, and the MJs even more so, the Comanches, the, the Jeep trucks. I wish they had kept making those things. It's a really nice neat vehicle. Uh, I wish they had at least made them through the 97 body style changeover. But, uh, but you know what's the, the really interesting thing with the uh, MJ is it actually lost out to the D- Dakota. And that baffles me because if you look at the drivetrain that they put into a Comanche versus the drivetrain they put into a Dakota reliability wise, I mean which Chrysler person had their head up you know where to, to make that decision? I mean, you look at the Comanches that were produced versus the Dakotas that were produced, and there's way more Comanches still alive, alive and kicking, you know, percentage-wise. They were very bad decision, I think. Well, you know, again, uh, we've all heard about uh, things being engineered for obsolescence. And I don't think it's as bad as it used to be. And certainly vehicles are lasting longer these days than what they used to, but I think a lot of that has to do with the competition and the quality coming from Japan. But it, yeah. it it's just like the 4.0. I mean, they they got rid of the 4.0 because they couldn't get the, the at least from what I've heard, they couldn't get the government mandated uh, mop per gallon out of it. Uh, and I personally, and I know this is going to rub some people the wrong way, I personally hate hate the J, the Jeep Liberty because the Jeep Liberty replaced the Cherokee, and the 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 Jeep Liberty in my mind is a piece of shit. It's a little bitty, VW-looking piece of shit. <laughs> it's underpowered, and it's ugly. 
And yeah, I don't well, think how the cars that Jeep produced, like they've got those compasses and stuff like that. And then like and again, someone might get pissed off who be saying this, but they put a Jeep logo on that. They might as well take a knee on and put the Jeep logo across the front. Yes. That was embarrassing. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Uh, I've heard some very good things about the Jeep compass, but it's not, in my opinion, a Jeep. No. No, uh, I mean you look at the way that they used to build them, and I mean, look at my '93. It's uh, it, it did not have a great maintenance plan. I mean, it was a daily driver for I think when I pulled the records on it, about eight people since '93. It's got 550,000 kilometers on it, which I I don't know what that works out to a mile. It's probably like 280 something right, like that. Right. But I mean, huge mileage, original motor, original transmission. And the only reason why the T case is swapped is I stole it out of it when, it was, when I was doing the body job on it to put the big one back together. I mean, the body was shot, but I, you know, I kind of, it was a gas station find guy rolled in with the passenger side pushed to the door, or the door pushed to the side of the seat. And I looked at this truck and said, How much do you want for it? He says, You can have it. He dropped it <laughs> off. I looked at it and looked at the odometer and went, you went 535,000 kilometers and you're still original. I have to fix you just to see how far you'll actually go. Yeah. So, and we've got a Ford, the Ford Fusion and the Mustang, they're both getting sold. And I'm actually going back to the 93 as my daily driver just to see how far I can push it. Yeah. Well, I was very happy that I, that I got that 99. And I, I was happy because I've gotten uh, 12 or 13 years out of life of this 98 and and the transmission's going strong the engine's going strong i mean i've got the heat creep but i, I could probably uh, take the lift kit off and put the stock tires back on it and not have the the highway heat heat creep problem i'm going to figure that out actually my um, transmission my bmw transmission temp gauge came in today so uh, i'm going to be installing that to see how much uh, heat i'm getting from the transmission are you still running it into the rad like the factory trans cooler? Yes, and one of the okay. one of the things I'm doing with this is because uh, if you've if you've noticed on my post, I'm a real nervous Nelly about doing things to the to the Jeep that aren't uh, that I can't measure or aren't proven. And even though I've had lots of people telling me it's perfectly fine, especially if you have an aftermarket cooler uh, transmission cooler on there, to, you can take it off the radiator. But I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it until I can measure the the temp from the radi radiator. Every one of my vehicles, like, I mean, every one that's an automatic that's not currently under a warranty, the, the, it has immediately away, went away from the factory rad cooler to an aftermarket cooler. Now, the only thing I'll tell you with, like, the AW4, I don't, I'm not so familiar with the newer 98 and plus transmissions is they actually can run a little too cool. And it's almost like having a shift kit. It'll it'll hit pretty hard when until it comes up to uh, temperature. Yeah, and that was kind of my concern. It doesn't get doesn't uh, you know I'm kind of surprised since you're in the the great white north and how cold it gets up there that you actually run without the radiator. I was concerned about that uh, doing that whenever we do get 30 degree temperatures here, and with the being hooked up to the radiator and then uh i have the uh the uh, oem uh, transmission cooler on mine and then with that bmw uh cooler uh the 30 like 35 degrees out it shifts you can tell it it, it doesn't really shudder but it, it, it hits hard like what you're saying and it doesn't doesn't do it very long it takes about you know maybe five minutes uh, and then it's fine so i was a little little concerned about removing it from the radiator altogether but this you time see, it, I I've got mine so tight to the rad that I get a little bit of heat soak to kind of bring it up to temperature. But I mean, I've put the uh, the temperature probe on it, and I mean, the tranny always measures a lot less than the uh, the the rad temperature at you know operating. So I was happy with that you know difference. I'm sorry. How were you measuring the temperature? I've got one of those laser uh, temperature gauges, yeah. so I use it like when I mod the engines and stuff like that. I'll use it and run it down each individual cylinder on the uh, exhaust manifold to make sure I've got an even burn mm -hmm. that I'm not running lean in a cylinder or something like that because that burns pistons up really quickly. Right. So uh, how, yeah. how do you how do you measure the transmission temperature though? Well, I just went off the. Uh, off the uh, the cooler itself, so the cooler's got a certain temperature associated with the body of the cooler that it's because it's it's dissipating that heat. 
and then I just move it up to the rad and see the difference between the two. Gotcha. Yeah, because I, I remember scanning the uh, the BMW uh, cooler, and I was I think it was around 170 when I had see it. See if I can find it, which one I'm using. I mean, as long as you can still hear me from here. Yeah. Uh, actually, I, I have one as well. Uh, it's a Fluke uh, that I, yeah. I bought off of Amazon, and uh, that's what I was using to see how hot the, um, the, the cooler was getting. I did not realize that that would be the same temp as what the uh, fluid in the, the transmission was. I figured it would be, be some, some degrees off. Well, it will be some degrees off, but it's still going to, because both of them are dissipating heat, right? So it's it's still going to give you an idea. You know, maybe your tranny is 10 degrees warmer than what you're reading on the outside, but the engine will, or the rad will be about the same. Okay. Well, I'm going to put the gauge on it, and then I'll be able to monitor it. And right now the plan is to hook up the, the transmission gauge and run it, because uh, I don't currently have the BMW um, cooler on there. I had, had a, a leak, and it was really strange because... Both hose clamps were loose, and I don't understand how they got loose. But anyway, uh, I'll probably put another another hose clamp uh, on there, just double it up, and then uh, hopefully that will solve the leak. And also, too, I removed it from being in front of the radiator out of the airflow since I was having the heat creep problem on the highway. I wanted to remove that heat source, and uh, I've actually uh, installed it in the, the seven little slots that are in the bottom of the custom bumper. So it's kind of at an angle, but it's in the front, so it, it gets airflow as a, as you're moving down the road. There's no uh, fan flow of air through there. When you start getting that heat creep, have you ever measured your fuel pressure on your uh, intake rail? No. Grab a, you can go down to pretty much any parts store, get a, a fuel pressure gauge, measure yourself at, when you're at cold startup when you're idling, and then go for a drive and wait till your engine starts to creep and watch your fuel pressure because I know I fought with the big one for a very long time of a similar heat creep where, you know, I'd get in around the 100 on the gauge and then it would start to climb up and then the um, the engine would actually start to run rough. And I thought it actually had something to do with uh, the temperature, but it was actually my fuel pressure was dropping so much that the engine was running lean, causing the EGTs to go up, which meant the whole engine temperature came up. And then because the fuel was so lean, it was actually start, starting to stutter. Right. Uh, mine runs fine. Uh, well, I, I'll take that back. Whenever it starts getting hot, when it starts running above the, the magic 210, um, it, you, you, you can feel it's losing some performance. And um, since I've uh, put a lot of effort into the uh, modifying the cooling system, um, even on the hottest days, it's very peppy. And I, I, haven't, I don't feel that loss of performance. Um, I really don't notice it unless I get on. Well, I've I fixed it, except on the highway. And on the highway, with with the air conditioner on, it uh, it gets too hot, uh, where it starts affecting performance. And you can just you can smell the the heat once you get to where you're going. You can smell it. Hmm. So. And that's only with the AC on. You've got the second fan, and it's coming on properly. Yes, I actually have a bypass on it. Uh, so um, that's the, the thing I've done most recently, which helps, uh, surprisingly. Uh, I, I guess the, somebody had made, the, uh, made the, uh, the observation that it probably is with the electric fan off, even running at highway speeds, it's probably acting as a block to the air flowing through that part of the radiator. So whenever I bypass it and turn it on, now even though it's not going to be sucking the air through there faster than the air is being pushed through there at least it's not impeding the airflow as much as it was now i don't know how true that is but uh, i do see cooler temperatures with the electric fan on constantly at highway speeds now the other thing i read up one time and i, I i've never actually researched it because i run aftermarket fans on the big truck but was that there were certain models of i can't remember if it was grand cherokee or certain cherokees that actually had more fins on the fan Oh, that's interesting. So more fins, obviously, higher airflow. Right. Like I, I run two aftermarket cooling fans plus the, the stock Cherokee fan. So I try to keep it really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I'm a, I'm a big believer in that. Now, one of the things I did, uh, I put in the heavy-duty Grand Cherokee uh, fan clutch um, some time back, and it did, did make a difference at low speed. Uh, I mean, I can I can go on the trails uh, during the middle of the summer, 95, 96, 97 degrees air temps, running the air conditioner, and uh, with the Cal induction hood, 
uh, high flow thermostat, high flow uh, water pump, uh, three core radiator, uh, Grand Cherokee heavy duty uh, clutch fan. You know, I'm fine. I, I don't know. It, it might get up to where the um, well, before I had the, the fan bypass on it, it might get up hot enough for the electric fan to kick on, but then it goes right back down. So it ap operates perfectly fine at anything under about 50 miles an hour. And it takes uh, probably about 12 miles for it to start getting hot. Uh, so you have to be on the highway for a little while. So the things that I have done to the cooling system certainly have helped the, the heat creep problem. It's just... It's just generating a little too much heat, and it probably will be, the, the, the solution probably will be removing the transmission from the radiator. It's, it's borderline where the, where the heat and, and the ability of the cooling system to handle it. Have you re-geared your truck? Oh, yeah. It's uh, okay. 456 gears. Yeah, I don't know. That, that's that's odd because like all the times I've ever had heat issues in any Jeep, it's always been at low speeds and never at high speeds. Oh yeah, I mean that's a very common uh, issue with the the Jeep Cherokees, and and uh, from my understanding is it has a lot to do with the uh, the way the the Cherokee is designed because it has a very skinny nose. Um, it doesn't have a very um, tall radiator, so. Uh, the surface area is very narrow. I think I think the air has a tendency, and this is another thing that I need to, to look at, is uh, putting some sort of air dam or air block uh, so that I can create more of a vacuum behind the radiator uh, because uh, I think that the airflow, uh, especially at high speeds, has more of a tendency to go on top of the Jeep and, and now with it lifted and especially with that uh, narrow bumper, front bumper that I have, uh, it goes under. Well... I mean, like a cow, cow hood is for, like a, you know, supposed to draw air in as it wraps over the top. So potentially by putting the cow hood on, you might actually be causing two different airflow, like conf like an airflow conflict because you have air coming in from the top of the hood, which might be fighting the air coming in through the rad, mm -hmm. causing turbulence in your engine bay. That's, that's possible. Because the cowl hood was originally designed at speed to, to hook the air in and pull it into the, into a carburetor, but we obviously don't have that. Right. And, I mean, at low speeds, it's going to allow the heat to exhaust at the top, but maybe at high speed, it, it could be actually a deficit. Well, I could always put a flap in there. I'd actually thought about taking uh, taking a electric spare electric fan that I had. Uh, I think it's a 1200 CFM uh, fan, and actually bolting it in that opening uh, that I have under the, the cowl. And then using it, uh, uh, manually turn it on and exhaust the, the air out of the uh, engine bay uh, while I'm at highway speeds. And, and create a, a vacuum uh, mechanically and, and see what that would do. And, you know, thinking about it, I think I have just a, a great opportunity to just burn the Jeep down if, I, <laughs> if it would catch on fire and be exhausting, <laughs> sucking air through there like that. But uh, before I do that, uh, I'm going to uh, I'll, I'm going to try a few other things, and, and one of those things may include putting a mechanical um, uh, door so that I can close off the back of that um, um, cowl induction uh, scoop, and and to see if that makes a difference. I suspect wasn't it the Pontiac GTOs that came with an electric flapper on the hood scoop? I'm sure somebody did. Uh, I mean, it makes this it makes too much sense. Maybe someone out there, I know there's like four people watching right now. Maybe someone out there knows. I don't know if they're logged in to be able to post up, but it's an interesting thought. I oh, mean, a lot um, of the stuff that everyone's doing is just kind of uh, try it and see if it works and then post up and let you know each other know so we don't all make the same mistakes. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Um, and uh, I know there's actually several people that are having the, the heat creep problem. And one of them uh, posted up here recently, uh, he's got the 35-inch tires. I had actually thought that part of the reason why I may be having the heat creep problem on the highway is because of the 32-inch tires and the 456 gears. Because if I go down, the, go down the highway at 80 miles an hour, that's 3,000 RPM. And I was thinking if I got 35s, it's going to drop the RPM range back down uh, very close to the stock uh, RPM range at that speed. But this guy... 456 gears, 35 inch tires, 4.0, heat creep problem. So, you know, just because it doesn't work on his doesn't mean it wouldn't work on mine, but at least 
it, it, it tells me that that's probably a dead avenue that I, I probably need to figure out exactly what the right <coughs> thing is for my my setup. Let me uh, let me just yeah. uh, let me just say real quick. I, I don't know. Uh, well, this was quite a bit while ago. I just noticed. Uh, sorry, Jeep Four by Four Hunter. He had asked a question here in the chat room. He wanted to know uh, what you think of the 19, 1989 Jeep Cherokees because he's looking at one here in Houston on Craigslist for two thousand dollars. I don't know if you if you saw that post up on XJ Talk. Yeah, I did. I I apologize. I've been so swamp busy that I haven't been able to post up as much because uh, the economy's obviously picked much up here in Alberta with the oil field, and I do the welding side of it. So I supply a lot of companies with their products. So it's been a little crazy. But the eighty nine. Honestly, um, there's a couple key features of each one that I found. I mean, the 98 to 01 has the strongest chassis that you'll get, hands down. Uh, the earlier, like, Renix style ones, they didn't have as much power, but the body life on them, usually, like, when you get into, like, the rust belts, I find that they don't rust as much as the 92 and newer. So... It's kind of a toss-up. I mean, if you don't mind doing a little bit of rust repair, because I know like the 93 that I have was horrible for rust. 95s were horrible for rust, especially in the floors and the A-pillar at the top. But, I mean, my 89, I have beat the absolute snot out of it. Since the day I bought it, I paid $200 for it. And I've been building it for six, seven years now. And it's still going strong. I have replaced the engine with a 95 engine, but I kept the Renix system. There's a few issues with the Renix, depending if it's a stick or an auto, but I mean, nothing you can't get around. And for a starter Jeep, like your first Jeep that you're going to go out and start pounding on, they're really simple to work on. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, the 98. Pretty solid overall. Yeah, the 98's not. Uh, I was I was real happy how simple it was, too. Um so uh, I was a little concerned about the price because uh, it, it does, the one that he's looking at does have a four and a half inch lift and it does have uh, 33 inch tires, I believe. And he, the, the Craigslist ad says there are other, other mods, but he doesn't go into them. But I was a little concerned that $2,000 for an 89 was a bit high. Is it, What's mileage on it? Um, I don't recall. Um, Jeep 4x400, did you... Do you happen to know what the mileage is? I don't remember if he had said it in the uh, in the Craigslist. Says I don't know now. IDK. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've got a kind of a rule of thumb when I'm buying a used vehicle that I'm kind of unconcerned, like I have some concerns with. My rule of thumb is I have to be able to look at the vehicle, look at every single good part that I know that's a good part, and tally it up in my head. If I have to sell this used and someone's going to lowball me. What are those parts worth? So, I mean, a four and a half inch lift, depending on, you know, what quality, how many dollars is that worth if you had to flog it on Craigslist, you know, XJ Talk, another site kind of thing? Mm -hmm. How much are the tires worth? How much are the rims worth? What can you get of the motor trans? Can you recover your money if you bought a, a pile? Right. So, I mean, the, uh, again, looking at that uh, Comanche, I'm going to go back to that 90 Comanche. It's a four-cylinder Comanche, five-speed, two-wheel drive. They want 420 bucks for it. Hmm. It's got four brand-new tires. I know I can turn around and sell the rims and tires for 200 bucks. Right. Because they're, they're brand spanking new. Uh, the motor's got 160,000 clicks on it. I can definitely get 200 bucks for it. A four-cylinder tranny that actually still shifts is a miracle. So, I mean, you can get $250 for that. So, I know I'll be in the green if that truck was a complete pile and I had to kill it. Right. So, that's that's kind of my rule of thumb. But, I mean, an 89, four and a half inches of the lift, you, you really got to start looking at the chassis, too. Because that's an older truck. If it's been wheeled for a while, if it doesn't have any kind of reinforcements, check the hatch. Make sure it opens and closes easily. Look at all the door jams. Make sure they line up. Um what are some other calm, bad spots? And, and yeah. anywhere yeah. where the floor meets the unibody, make sure you don't have any cracks in the welds because I have chased down so many cracked welds and broken pieces in my big ones since I've been beating it that there's been a couple times where I've actually almost considered a new chassis. Yeah, I can so. see how that would be. Uh, 
I can see how that would be um, might be a necessity, especially the, with the way you beat yours. And speaking of which, we're a little over time, but I wanted to ask you about those motor mounts. Boy, those are some some hell of a motor mounts. I'm I'm really surprised that there are so many little nipples to attach to on the side of the the fourth one oh. I didn't realize that there was that many connection points. You know, neither did I. And after last year, I was a little you know, broken hearted because when I saw my uh, my block and the bosses and I realized that I had cracked a few of them, I thought I was going to have to rip the whole engine down, get another block, move the cam, yeah, remachine a block for the big pistons, you know, move the head, do all that work again. Yeah, exactly. And I uh, I did some searching and I came across Brown Dog after a recommendation from a guy who had run them in uh, King of the Hammers from Pirate 4x4. And I called them up and I said, look, guys, you know, here's what I've done. Here's the issues that I've got. What can I do? Like, can you solve my problem? And it's it's husband and wife team with their dog, and they were so great to deal with. And I mean, they spent a lot of time going through everything with me. And you know, when I when I went to go put them in and everything like that, I mean, it was the whole experience was nice. I mean, I, I'm I'm still looking at the manual sitting on my right in front of me on my shop uh, desk here, and for the amount of time that it would, would have taken to make that, I don't know how they do it without, you know, and still turn a profit. And and just the fact that they're so passionate about what they do, it's, again, it's one of those inspiring things. It's like reading a thread about, you know, someone commenting on your work. Mm-hmm. It was just a really good thing. Well, it's a beautiful product. I mean, the level of, of detail with a little, uh, this, you know, install this first and uh, just the whole thing. It was... I don't need anything like that, and I found myself wanting to buy some. Well, you know, I never knew this was an issue until it all of a sudden was upon me, right? I mean, you <laughs> take one, like, what what mine was is I took a, I misjudged a rock, and it just missed my skid plate, and it caught the uh, exhaust just in front of the transmission pan, oh, okay. and when it hit, it lifted my drivetrain up enough that it actually pulled the bolt and the block boss right out. I mean, I don't... Everyone else can't see this, but I mean, I'm holding the engine plate here, and you can see a chunk of the block still bolted to it. Mm-hmm. And believe it or not, when I was actually putting the driver's side one in, I had a broken bolt, and when I went to pull it out, the boss cracked. Oh, okay. They're not very strong. So, you know, I mean, if you can share the load of three bolts over seven or eight, it makes sense. And if you look at the factory Jeep mount, I mean, Pretty much any Jeep out there, you're going to have to change the driver's side mount because they're weak. Yeah, uh, I've already gone through uh, two of them uh, on the, the driver's side. And the nice thing with these guys, you can buy a, a mount to lift your engine up. So if you've got some clearance issues, you can get one that's like a half inch taller. So you can get your engine up just a little bit more. So if you, you're running into diff colliding with an oil pan or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, if anybody even has any questions, give them a call. Talk to them for five minutes, and you'll realize they're the real deal. And anybody I've talked to, that I've seen one issue with one, and they, they basically called up and said, hey, I have an issue. They sent them on a new one the next day. Uh, what was the, the name of the, the – I mean, I know you have it in the post, but just so everybody yeah. could hear it on the, the podcast. It's uh, Brown Dog Industries, and I think it's Brown Dog, browndogindustries.com. And uh, I'll be honest, I mean, just just pick up the phone, call them, mm-hmm. and because if you have any concerns, they'll be alleviated just by talking with them. And if you don't mind me asking, how much did you pay for those? Um, because it's a, here's an interesting thing. We race the Jeep, and we donate every single penny that we like win from the races. We do fundraisers, everything like that. We raise money for breast cancer. Kind of for a couple different reasons. My mom's a three-time survivor of breast cancer, but also because generally of the 4x4 community in the media, out in the public, you get this redneck mentality where all we're doing is going out, running over trees, burning up the mud, whatever. Right. So we wanted to put a positive spin on it because we're losing a lot of trails in Alberta. Uh We lost, two years ago, we lost hundreds of, like hundreds and hundreds of kilometers of trails because of the media and... And honestly, because of a couple of bad eggs. Oh, yeah, of course. Turns out that the um, the, the wife or the, the, the female partner, however you want to put it, 
she was just diagnosed and when she heard what we were doing they gave us um they actually helped us out a lot so they gave us quite a quite a discount because uh we don't make any money off the truck in fact it actually costs us boatloads every year to go out and race it oh, I'm and sure. then prize money because we donate it all well actually what i what i meant to ask was how much are they not initially how much I, did you pay i think they're about 330 bucks for a full set so you look at the time, the steel, the mounts, the powder coating. Unless you're spinning these things off on a pretty quick rate, you, you're never going to do it yourself. I mean, I've got a plasma cutter, TIG, MIG, stick, everything in the garage. By the time I went through an engineer, figured it all out, did it, I would have spent triple that to make them. Sure. It, just, just from your time and uh, trial That's and error. That's the time is the key thing. Yeah, and we're on the 30-day countdown on the on the race. So, and I'm I just put buckets in for the 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 four link. So time is definitely a an issue. Well, I had actually asked you in the post, and we have a kind of a hard time uh, getting a hold of one another. I don't know if it's time difference or uh, uh, the time that I'm on the computer and you're on the computer. So let me just ask you here. Um, you had mentioned about uh, XJ Talk sticker for your for your Jeep, and actually had posted up a. A picture of the um, the die cut, tailgate. yeah, the yeah. one on the tailgate, and uh, I had I had put in the, a post. I said, well, uh, w I can get you some eight by twenties like what I have on my Jeep, if you have a place to put them. If that's too big, uh -huh. and also too, I didn't know what kind of time frame I had, which I think you just said you got thirty days. Yeah, like the race is July first weekend. Um, eight by twenty, God, that's oh, they're Again, huge. You give me that crazy uh, standard talk. Oh, oh, yeah, I forgot that damn metric system again. See if you guys are good with the program. Wait, 12 inches a foot. Yes. So 8 by 20. Yeah, I can fit that on the truck. It'll be on the roof or one of the side glass, or I can't put anything down the side of it because I rhino lined the whole truck. But I'll definitely get it on there. Where it be, maybe well, even the hood scoop. Well, I have, I have some half that size. Uh, now I was just thinking, you know, bigger is better. Especially, you know, from Texas, everything's bigger in Texas. But if well, uh, if it's Alberta, which is the uh, the Canadian taxes, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but if if uh, if one half that size would work better, I I can. Uh, I, and I I was only saying two of the eight by twenties because uh, one is like uh, um, uh, seventy five percent the cost of two. I can get uh, I can get two for you know a lot cheaper. So uh, I yeah. can, if you'd rather have one half the size, I'm just thinking there's this, here's this radical looking Jeep XJ. It's in a race. It's bright orange. How big a XJ talk sticker can I get on there? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I've given away the roof to a friend of mine that runs an auto wrecker because he figures it'll be the best advertising because he, he's got his money on that I'm going to put it on its side again this year. Mm-hmm. But uh, the hood scoop could definitely fit it, and I think an eight by twenty would fit the the rear doors on the glass. And honestly, if I have to look through the back glass, I'm not doing the right thing in the race. Mm -hmm. So, well, and the, and if I you've got some and small I don't, ones, let me know. I'll get them on there for sure for you. Yeah, I wasn't gonna ask to put them on because I mean, I don't have any money, <laughs> and and that, I know that uh, it's. That's the that's the nice thing about uh, going racing uh, and putting your time and effort into these things is that you can either uh, get donations or get money to help you do the race. So I didn't want to be so bold to say, hey, uh, can you put this on your Jeep? So uh, after you had uh, asked me about it a couple of times, I'm thinking, yeah, I'd love to have the XJ Talk sticker on there. Uh, yeah, so, you so get it to me, I'll it. get it on there. So I, I just want to let you know where I was coming from. I wasn't trying to get something for nothing. Uh, I appreciate oh, your... Oh, God, no. I appreciate you, uh, your offer because I think that uh, all the time and effort that you put into that, you should uh, get a lot more than uh, some uh, some uh, minor uh, Jeep Cherokee website uh, free sticker. <laughs> hey, you know what? It, it's all about promoting the sport, getting other people's interested, involved, and making sure that they're aware of of the trails and what's happening out there and who's doing the cleanups and who's doing you know the maintenance on them. We really need to put a positive spin and a positive light on four-wheeling. Yeah. So we don't get, 
you know, the bad media because it's going to take our trails away. And then what are we going to do? We're going to go crawl shopping carts at Walmart. I mean, yep. Be out there, um, um, articulating on, uh, uh, the medians. Um, yeah, I was, uh, and I meant, I meant to mention this earlier, it, you know, we can do some stuff on uh, XJ talk about the, the breast cancer stuff. Um, certainly things in the notices, um, advertisement for, you know, some banners about uh, the race you're going to be in and how to donate and, and so on and so forth. So, you know, let's, let's, let's get together and work on that. I mean, I think that's a very worthy cause. I mean, I don't think anybody likes breast cancer. Oh, and I, I meant, I meant to tell you, um, earlier uh when you said your mom was a three-time survivor i'm very sorry to hear that but yet i'm very glad to hear that she's uh she's uh you know making it through and that that can't be a, a good thing i lost my dad to uh, lung cancer over 20 years ago and uh, he passed away on father's day so um it is not a a good thing and uh uh if he had uh, if he had quit smoking back in 72 when i tried to get him to when i was uh, very young uh, I'm sure he would still be here today, but those are uh, those are choices that we all make, and I don't do not believe that is anything that's attributed to breast cancer. Yeah, uh, the breast cancer, you know, it's it's funny. You know, you mentioned uh, doing something that could help. Uh, one thing my wife is looking for, and it'll be really cool to see if we can get some uh, shirts from the U.S. But she's doing two quilts this year as a fundraiser because last year she cut her hair off, and well. There's not quite enough to cut off anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but she's doing two quilts. One she's doing from brand new fabrics and doing the breast cancer ribbons and stuff like that, which we're going to throw up on eBay and do an uh, auction for the event. The other one we're going to auction off at the event. And what we're looking for is old 4x4 t-shirts that aren't too badly stained or torn. And she's actually going to build a quilt out of all the logos and uh, emblems that are on it. Mm -hmm. And she's going to auction that off actually at the event. So, I mean, you, I'm in the same boat as you. We don't have a whole bunch of money to spend on shipping and stuff like that. So, I mean, if someone were able to sh send out some shirts that, you know, from the local 4x4 club chapter or, you know, something like that, we'd love to get them on there and build a whole quilt out of them just as a, a little thing. Sure. Makes sense. Great idea. I mean, anything you... It's just like uh, the website. I just tried to put some stuff together and uh, put something that I'd have a little more control over how people uh, interacted with one another, which, you know, earlier you said that the XJ Talk is a very friendly site, and that was my main goal. Um, even though my wife says I'm, I'm a very mean person. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I can't remember what, what it was about, but I, I remember when I first joined, I actually got a PM from you because there was something I said that was a little, maybe a little harsh, you know, and uh, I went, oh, yeah, right. You know, I'm not on pirate right now. I've got to make sure, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> well, I, if, I, if, I, if I remember correctly, I tried to come across very light on that because I didn't want to come across uh, harsh because that's the whole goal of XJ Talk, that everybody has uh, can get in there and say what they, what they need to say, but just do it in a respectful manner. And the other thing, hard thing is, you know, when you're on, when you're posting on a forum, the way someone reads it from the way you were trying to explain it, yes, two totally different things. And you know what? It, it can totally be uh, taken the wrong way. Yes, uh, I got burned so many times working in IT with my email messages because I'm a very logical, to the point type person, and and uh, uh, that that rubbed some people the wrong way. Even though technically what I said was fine, so I've kind of learned. Yeah. I've been on the other side of it, so I've kind of learned through a lot of hard knocks about uh, that, that and, and that's one of the reasons why I use so many goofy uh, um, icons, uh, those emoticons, so I can try to get across that I'm just kidding, I'm just joking, because I know how direct I can be. Yeah, yeah, I, I can appreciate that, absolutely. So, I, I, I don't know if Jeep 4x4 Hunter is still on, I, I, I don't know if he's, if you he heard everything we said, and if he's... Uh, digging the answer or not but i mean if he's willing to go and get more photos of it i mean i'm sure we'd all be able to help him pick out a good one. Oh, absolutely now, one thing I, I meant to mention to you five did you say five hundred dollars for mustang heads that's what i was told last week during the uh during the chat um it was a uh, reman remanufactured heads because you i don't know like my local yard i could probably walk in and buy a whole engine for 300 bucks 
Yeah, these would be, uh, I mean, valves, the valve job, uh, the, the complete heads. Two complete heads for $500. They were remanufactured. But uh, talking to um, the uh, the other admin on X3 Talk, he does a lot of uh, 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 engine type work, uh, com uh, auto uh, auto work. He says that it, it's a good chance that I may just have a warped head uh, that's probably not cracked. I, I may not even have to have it uh, have it milled. I uh, just need to check it. So what I'm going to uh, do? If it's warped, I'd still play in it. No, of course, but he was saying it may not be warped. It may just be a blown head gasket. So basically, it's one of those situations where you just don't know till you get into it. Um, so yeah. I'm just going to have to take it apart and uh, and see. And I think that I, I read a, a recent post, and it's not a local price, but it, I don't think it should be that far off, uh, that somebody said machine shops will, will mill, the, mill those heads for 100 bucks, $50 a piece. And so, yeah. And another fifty dollars for head what I was saying, If you've got a hundred bucks a piece, there's two hundred bucks in your heads. You haven't even popped them apart yet. Then you're going to be hundred and fifty bucks into an engine gasket kit, and your time to do all that. I just check around the local yard, see what they have for a low mileage three point eight. Yard the motor out, stick the new one in, and flog it. Yeah, well, I I have personally, and this is my inexperience, because the only time I've changed engines is when I've rebuilt them, and I haven't done that since I was very young. To give you an idea, it was a 350 and a, a 327, uh, Chevy 350 oh, nice. and 327. Uh, I loved that 327 up until the day I, I broke the uh, one of the mains. Anyway, um, <laughs> I have a really, a really heavy foot. One of the reasons why I got into uh, four-wheel drives and trucks and stuff, so I wouldn't drive around as fast. But anyway, no, no tickets. Uh, I was, I, I had really good eyesight and learned very quickly how to avoid those situations. Mainly what it is, mainly what it is, is that you, you don't drive fast for very, very long. You can burst and, and get it back down to acceptable and they just don't mess with you. Even with that bright red Jeep, uh, I don't have any problems. And I guarantee you, I don't drive a speed limit with that thing. Hardly ever. Uh, the only time I, the only time I drop speed limit is when I'm turning into the neighborhood, and that's because there's kids on the streets. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, I have a I have a problem because of my so, inexperience with it of getting a junkyard <laughs> engine. I, I, the way I look at it is, I'm getting somebody else's problem, and uh, I would rather uh, do the work with the heads and the gaskets and stuff if no other reason, so I could see it and have a better understanding of of where I was. But I appreciate what you're saying, and that, that is a common solution that I do here. Uh -oh. Sounds like the boss is there. Okay, well, actually, we're, uh, we're over almost a half hour here, so... It's about time to, to wrap this stuff up. It was uh, great having uh, Jensen call in and, and very interesting discussion. Um, actually, Jensen had uh, responded to um, my request for a co-host uh, that I posted up on XJ Talk. So uh, if, uh, if you're interested in being a, a co-host here on the show, um, get on XJ Talk and uh, hit me up and we can give it a try see how things would work out basically we would uh, not just have a conversation between ourselves but uh, go over uh, subjects that we wanted to cover on the show and um, even interview a guest so I think it could be a lot of a lot more fun than hearing one guy ramble on I mean hearing two guys ramble on is always more interesting right so if uh, if you have a Jeep Cherokee you need to join xjtalk.com and uh, you can look me up, Motoroy. Uh, I, I neglected to mention my name's Tony, but uh, Motoroy is my uh, name on xjtalk.com, and we have a lot of fun there. If you're already a member, thanks for joining. Tell people about our podcast. Tell, uh, tell people about xjtalk.com. Uh, the more, the merrier. Uh, and post up. The more you post, the more people are going to join, and the more we're going to have... Um, not only the fun, but more information about uh, how everybody is doing things on their Jeep, what problems they're having, and, and more importantly, what are the solutions. So guys, make sure you join us next week. We're on every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Central Time. And uh, 
This is Jeep Cherokee, xjtalk.com. So until next week, have a, a, a very good uh, week. And, uh, man, I hope Texas gets some rain soon because uh, it's very dry here. See you guys. Thanks again. you know of a better fucking site, fuck you. By the way, this is Big Jim 350. Bye. Aww.